let's start with the beginning. This is going to be Zoom training, which is the basics of Zoom. Plus, I'm going to give you a couple of sprinkles of expert tips. Now, I believe you should still be able to see me in the upper right-hand corner, true? If you've set yourself to gallery view or speaker view, either of which you could do in the upper right-hand corner, you should be able to see me. All right? Now, you'll also notice that I have a background and I'm gonna show this towards the end. I'm gonna show you the, how to do it, how to set up a green screen and it's amazingly easy and amazingly cool technology. Right now, I don't know if you recognize it, but this was actually the room Jack Nicholson was in, in The Shining, which I think is a pretty good example of a background for today because that's what we're all living with. I don't know how many of you are single. I am, so I have been alone and lonely for a month, okay? Not only that, bad strategy. I broke up with my girlfriend in January just before all this happened. And when I say I broke up with my girlfriend, what I actually mean is that she broke up with me and she was actually practicing social distancing before this whole thing started, okay? She didn't just keep me six feet away. She kicked me all the way to the hey, Sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me, Patrick? Uh, yes, I can, but please mute yourself. I gave you the Man, I can't to unmute you. yourself, but I want to make sure that people are unmuted for now. I'm sorry, that people are muted for now. Okay? All right. Um, one of the things I'm going to teach you later is how you can choose a virtual background. And one of the backgrounds that I have been using is this. I don't know how many people have, have seen this before. How many people have seen the movie Castaway? Remember Tom Cruise in the movie, I mean, Tom uh, Hanks in the movie Castaway? I even invested the $20 because these are my friends right now. This is all that I have besides Zoom meetings is me and the soccer ball like Tom Hanks. I'm also going to choose a very professional background for this meeting that I think you will like. That looks like an office, looks like me in a very nice office, and I could pick a lot of options, any of which we could show you later on. Okay, back to the meeting. First of all, Zoom, is, our lives are lonely, but Zoom makes it amazing. I want you to think about this for a moment. I think I put this in my newsletter that a lot of you got. Realize that if this happened 20 years ago, we would be doing this by email, which would be awful. If this happened 30 years ago in 1990, we would literally be doing this with a phone on the wall and you'd be paying for long distance and you would be sending letters in the mail because you didn't have email yet. So the fact that Zoom even exists now is amazing to me, given that we're gonna be in this for a while, maybe a month, maybe 18 months, we don't know, but I'll tell you, a lot of you are going to be doing business like this for a long time, so you might as well get to learn it well. Okay, there's a paid version of Zoom. And one of the cool things that it gets, first of all, you can do a lot of amazing things with Zoom for free. So feel free to just use it for free if that's what you wanna do. But if you're doing it for business, one of the cool things is that you get to have a meeting for more than 40 minutes. And that becomes worthwhile because if there's anything that you've gotta do and you're in a meeting and you're at meeting 35, I mean, you're at minute 35 and you can't finish up in the next five minutes, it is worth 140 bucks a year, however, if you have an extension to Google Chrome called Wikibuy, it can actually give you a discount code. And the discount code that I used was the one that I show on the screen here, ACNIBO-Zoom. And it saved me 45 bucks. So I bought it right away so that I could have you know, all the options of Zoom for a year. What that also gives you is the capability to do upgrades, which you can't do from the free version. Like, if I decide to run a session with 500 people, I can do that but I can't do it until I at least buy the 100 a year option. And then you have to buy the options that are upgrades from that. Note, Vanessa, who is on the call, 
did actually, <laughs> Vanessa's so cool, she actually read some of the little agreement that you've got to agree to before clicking, and I didn't. And evidently, if you have that Wikibuy extension, it allows them to, to take some banking information or something like it's It's got some scary stuff in it. So you might want to be careful about whether or not you actually want to do that. Okay, like I said, my girlfriend broke up with me in January. The good news is that I didn't get coronavirus from her. Of course, I also didn't get a text message from her. I didn't get a phone call from her. I didn't get my coffee maker back. I didn't get any of that. For people that are interested in a picture, this is what she looks like. Okay, been ghosting me since January. And she also said that on the, on the way out the door, take a look at today's paper because you're yesterday's news. So there I am, the highlight of the paper, the lonely guy who's now got friends just on Zoom. All right, let's talk about the time plan for today. First, I'm gonna talk for about 30 minutes. And little by little, I may ask you for a little bit of input, but for the most part, this is going to be 30 minutes of me giving you Zoom basics, sprinkles of some expert tips, with a little bit of interaction. Then we will do 30 minutes or more, as long as you like. Realistically, I could stay an hour until 8.30 or so, um, where I want your tips, if you have some. And also, if anybody has any Q&A, we'll do Q&A. Here are some of the things that we're going to talk about. Audio, viewing options, video, lighting, backgrounds, how to host a meeting, and then a cool way to do invites that I've never seen anybody talk about, but that I think all of you will find worthwhile. Okay, we'll start with a test. And this is a way that I like to promote interactivity because it gets people thinking in their heads. What's five plus five? Six plus four, <laughs> seven plus three, eight plus two. What's an aluminum can made of? Tin. It's aluminum. <laughs> oh. Aluminum. Mute yourself, otherwise you get caught. <laughs> All right? An aluminum can is made of aluminum, but... I like things like that because they get people thinking. They allow you to do a little interactivity without having people actually talking. Okay, let's talk about audio. First of all, I am actually talking, believe it or not, into the microphone on my Mac. All right, of all of the setups that I brought with me, I'm actually staying in a hotel right now. Of all the setups that I bought, brought with me, people have told me that this gives the best sound. But I think you should... You should experiment with a lot of things. I actually have a $150 microphone at home. I have another $50 microphone at home. I didn't bring them with me, unfortunately. I have a lavalier mic that I usually use when I'm speaking. And for some reason, it doesn't sound good. Okay? This audio, I'm hoping, is good. But I want you to experiment with your audio and do your audio with a friend of yours to make sure that it sounds good. Now, here was a snapshot from a test run that I did before. And it makes me harken back to what my father used to say, which was, shut up. All right, the idea is that when you first get into a Zoom meeting, I think you should click mute in the lower left-hand corner to shut up so that other people don't hear you. This is good for a couple of reasons. One, you don't wanna to have too much noise in the background. And if you have a meeting like this with 25 people who we now appear to have on the call, if you have 23, 25 people on the call, somebody is gonna have noise in the background that they don't know about or that becomes intermittent. Like, you might have kids in the background, you might have dogs in the background, you might have sirens in the background. Any of those things are distracting. Now, the first time a kid shows up, it's cute. The second time, it starts to get a little bit distracted. Third time, people start getting annoyed. So if you keep mute on and then you want to talk, here's a tip most people don't know. If you want to talk, hit the space bar. And it's like a walkie-talkie. If you hold down the space bar, you can talk. 
And so I want everybody to do that now and say their name. Hold down the space bar and give us your name. Hello, hello, hello. This is Evelyn. I am Rob hello, Peck. hello. I am. How cool is that? How many people knew that? Now, there are a couple ways that you can show me that. In the right-hand side, you'll notice there's something called reactions. If you go there, you can either press a hand being raised or you can press clapping or something like that. And either one will show up for five seconds and then disappear. So that's one way to show whether or not you knew something. And I want to see how many people actually knew that tip. So through reactions, how many people already knew that tip? Okay. There's another way to do this. And the other way is if you have gallery view set up, in other words, if you can see the people that are on the call, it's actually okay to just do this, you know, to see if somebody knows something. It's a fast way to do communication, even if people are muted. So I think you should consider the technical way and the, um, the not so technical way. Okay, so first idea would be to mute yourself. Secondly, and a hot tip that a lot of people don't know is to hold down the space bar like a walkie-talkie when you want to talk. Again, reactions are on the right. Now, all of these slides that I'm showing you will be in a handout that will be available to you. And here's a tip about making handouts. What I do when I'm speaking in front of crowds is I always put the slide number in the upper right-hand corner. The reason is that in a big crowd, not everybody can see the bottom of the screen, but they can usually see the top right and left corner. So that's where I put the, um, the slide number. However, most people on Zoom will have the pictures and you know slides of all of the people, the videos of all the people in the upper right-hand corner. So I now put the slide number in the lower left-hand corner. I want you to have these handouts so you don't have to take a lot of notes. So, if you decide that you want more detail on something, just put the, write down the page number instead of writing a lot of notes. And that way you can go back to the handout later on and it will have more details. Okay, right beside the mute button is a, an up arrow or like a little hat. That thing is actually called a chevron. And if you click that chevron, it will take you to audio settings. And audio settings has a couple of pieces of information. And I recommend that you look at this later on. But the two pieces of information that you have are the ability to hit the space bar and the ability to automatically be muted when you enter a meeting, both of which I believe in setting. I think it'll make your life easier. Now, also in that set of audio settings, it allows you to test your microphone so you can see what you sound like here, what you sound like. And that may be useful too, but I also believe in asking a friend at some point what your sound sounds like so that they know, um, so that they can give you advice on whether or not you sound good. And I tested a whole bunch of things before I started doing Zoom sessions at this hotel. Okay, I'm also a big believer in adding jokes. You wanna hear a joke? Nobody objected. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why do Easter eggs hide at Easter? Because they're a little chicken. And I heard absolutely no laughter, which is no different than when I do that joke in presentations. Okay, so it's at least consistent. All right, delayed introduction. First of all, thank you all for coming. There are some true rock stars in this audience, rock stars from the National Speakers Association, rock stars from sales consulting, consulting people, a whole bunch of people from my email list, a handful of friends of mine. I did not send this out to my whole email list. For those of you that do marketing and do A-B testing, I just wanted to do a few people at a time because I wanted this to have about 20 or 30 people, which is exactly what we have, so that you could see a manageable number of people on the screen. You can only have 49 total people on a screen, and once it gets larger than that, scrolling amongst them becomes annoying. Okay, like I said, you will all get handouts if you're interested, and we'll take questions at the end. Next slide, the idea is to teach you the basics of Zoom, including audio, video, lighting, and backgrounds, and to have a little fun while you're learning. 
What do I do? I do speaking and consulting on this. I used to make my living speaking in front of large crowds and there are no large crowds anymore, <laughs> okay? So everybody's adjusting their business, myself included. Now, I was lucky enough that my father also told me, save money, don't spend a lot of money, save it for a rainy day, this is the rainy day and I'm gonna be fine. But I'm actually excited about the future because there's gonna be a lot of this in the future and even after people start going back, even after they have a vaccine, maybe 18 months from now, or even after we have some form of going back to work, this is going to become a lot of the new normal. And be grateful. Like I said, if this was 1990, the world would be awful. It's amazing to me that this technology is free, it's easy, and it's fast. It's not perfect, but it's pretty fast. Okay, a little less about my background. I won the National Speakers Association speaking competition in the year 2012. I was also vice president of operations for the search engine that was tied with Google for best search engine in the year 2000. It was called Northern Light. And we didn't do so well or I wouldn't be doing this right now. I'd be on a yacht someplace. Okay, first of all, we're gonna talk about viewing and you've probably done a little bit of this already, but in the upper right hand corner, you will see something that says either speaker view or gallery view. And by clicking one versus the other, you see two things, okay? One is either a bunch of people that are in the meeting or you see just the single person that's speaking. And if you use speaker view and everybody's unmuted, it can become a little bit of a distracting free for all because what Zoom tries to do that's really clever but really difficult is Zoom tries to figure out who is speaking and then show just them in the speaker view and sort of put others in the background. And if multiple people are doing it at the same time, it becomes a little bit difficult. So I typically use gallery view. Footnote, one thing that Zoom does really, really badly is it uses a user interface technique called hovering. Here's the idea behind hovering. If you hover your mouse over anybody's picture, you'll see that you get some options and they don't even show up until you hover over the picture. That's why I hate this. I wish it just automatically showed it and then allowed you to sort of put it to bed, but it doesn't. So you've got to sort of know that it's there in order to find it and that's what I wanted to show you. By the way, if you see the three dots, which are called an ellipsis, it gives you a bunch of options that you can specify for someone, including the fact that you could take a particular speaker, like maybe your boss, or maybe the economic buyer, if you're speaking to a few people in a meeting, but you want to see what their boss is doing, is doing in a sales meeting, and you wanna keep them on the screen. Okay, so speaker view is like an option, but like I said, it's a free for all in an open meeting unless people are polite. This gives you one view, and by the way, it also gives you a little bit of a glimpse of the room that I'm in. I'm in a hotel room, that's my green screen behind me. This is me while I was prepping, you know, dressed down. And then behind me, you will see the full mess of what my setup looks like. But doesn't it look professional with the green screen background? I'm gonna tell you how to do that and I'm gonna tell you how to do it cheaply. Okay, if you do gallery view, which is the next slide, gallery view allows you to see multiple people at a time. And in the particular meeting that I was in, uh, that I did the screenshot from, it was just two of us at a time. Again. Hovering on slide 23, I hate. But if you hover and click, it will show you a bunch of options. Like you could take someone else and if you are hosting a meeting, you can make them a co-host and make them have the same power that you do. And there are a whole bunch of other things you could do, removing people actually. Put them in a waiting room, which is the Zoom version of a time out, which is kind of cool. I like that. Okay. I'm also a believer, especially in this kind of an environment, to throw in some funny every so often. So I Google a lot of jokes and tweets and things like that to lighten it up a little bit. And here is a favorite funny tweet of mine that everybody can relate to. Autocorrect can be your best friend or your worst enema. And if I, as I have always said, that is ducking funny. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your video. All right, 
as my father used to say, you're ugly. So I want to make sure the video looks as good as it can, but I always start out by stopping my video and making sure I'm ready before I actually get on video. All right. Then if you want to see the options for the video, there's a Chevron right beside the stop video option in your lower left-hand corner. And if you click video settings, you'll see a bunch of video settings. Now, one of them is to enable HD, which I usually do, although I gotta be honest, I don't look that good in HD, so I'm not sure it's a good idea. Another option is to touch up your appearance. And this is kind of cool, because when you touch up your appearance, it, it tends to do things like it softens your skin and a whole bunch of other things like that, which are kind of cool. If you take a look over on the right, one of the things that's annoying about Zoom, and this is just a bad user interface, is that it's not obvious that you can scroll down and see other things. And that's kind of a shame. Okay, by the way, if I decide to touch up my appearance, this is what ended up happening. Notice that it took out some of the blemishes that were on my skin before, okay? Highlights my hair a little bit. You can't see my abs, but take my word for it, they're there. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's talk a little bit about video lighting. The biggest mistake most people make is bad lighting. They usually just take whatever light is in the room and that isn't necessarily a good idea. For instance, you shouldn't have light behind you because then you look really dark. You should have light, if you can take a look at my face, I have light coming from both sides of me, it's a little hard to do, yeah, both sides of me in this hotel room to keep me illuminated. Now it's not perfect, it's not as perfect as I would have it at home, okay? but it's pretty good. Like you can see my face, my face is illuminated. But I wanna show you an example of a pro that did this badly for a long time. Her name is Juliet Kayam, and she's on the news all the time. She is a rock star in the world of uh, home security. She was actually the number two uh, homeland security person in the entire country for a while. She was the deputy home, um, homeland security advisor. And she's on CNN all the time. And here was the lighting that she first had when everybody had to start going home and she was getting interviewed from home. And notice there's sort of a glaring light on part of her face and the rest of her isn't lit up. Then she had a glaring light sort of on the top of her head and a glaring light on the side of her face. Then she was just in the dark. These are a few days apart. Then she had natural light coming on one side of her face, but the other side was dark. Then she had light coming from under her, which made her look like she was coming out of a horror movie. And then finally, she got it right. But it took her a couple of weeks to get it right. And she is amazing at this. She's smart. She's Harvard undergrad. She's Harvard graduate school. She's smart. She's compelling. She knows everything. Like, but it even took her a while to get this together while she was working at home. So. Here's what I recommend. You should have light from two 45 degree angles. If this is what your computer looks like and you are looking at your computer and your webcam is in the top of your computer, then at two 45 degree angles from you, you should have two lights and they can be cheap. You don't have to buy expensive ones. The ones that I show like the cone light, that is on the right, those usually go 10 or 20 bucks at Staples, for instance. The one on the left is $11 from Amazon. And it's nice in that it's not just a, a blaring bulb, it's a round bulb, which tends to be more forgiving and tends to illuminate more of you or whatever it is that it's lighting up. Footnote, the poor man's way of doing this, because I started doing it the cheap way before I started investing money in it, the cheap way to do it is to take a cone light, like the one on the right, like I said, you can get those for 10 bucks, and tape a piece of paper over it. What that does is it stops you from getting a beam of light into one part of your face, and it softens the light a little bit. Now, what I have done, even in this hotel room is, I've got a portable light that costs about 100 bucks. 
So it's expensive and it's illuminating me over on this side. All right, I'm using just light from the room on the other side. Okay, another thing that is very available now is something called a ring light. And the concept behind this ring light, believe it or not, is for people to be able to do selfies. And it's tough to tell from this picture, but this particular light is actually a bunch of lights all together in a circle. And that thing that you see actually clips over a phone. What that means is that the camera would be in the middle. And so all of those lights are sort of shining on your face. And it does a decent job for somewhere in the $15 range of illuminating you. And if you take a look just beside it, it shows that it comes with a bunch of covers so that you can get white light and then softer and then a little bit of yellowish light. Um, and there are tons of options for this at all price ranges. You can go anywhere from $10 to, you know, like I said, I have a $100 one right over there right now. And I'm not convinced it's worth the 100 bucks, but, you know, I wanted to experiment with all the different kinds of technologies. If you want a great setup, those cost in the multi hundred dollar range. So if you want a high end studio at home, expect it to cost in the hundred to two hundred dollar range, and you can easily go up to you know five hundred if you want to look like people do actually on TV. Okay, little more of a laugh. I came up with this meme recently, and I thought it was ridiculously funny, and it didn't get as many laughs as I thought. But you know the issues that people have had with toilet paper. You know the issues that people have had with just throwing away gloves. So here was my idea. This is just wrong and on so many levels. Yeah, it didn't get as many laughs as I thought, but I thought it was a good idea. Okay, now let's talk about video backgrounds that I think a lot of you are going to like. First of all, again, this is the room that I'm in, sitting on a couch with a green screen behind me, all right? That green screen cost me 12 bucks, okay? If you get on Amazon and you look for green screens, it's just a piece of cloth. Now, the people that I bought it from are weasels because they showed it on a cheap stand. So I thought I was going to get this cheap plastic or metal stand to hold the thing. No, all it, it came like a, uh, like a bed sheet. All right. Now I'm at the hotel. I get it delivered. I take it and I've taped it up with duct tape. Okay, duct tape isn't just for keeping your prisoners silent. Duct tape can also be used for things like this where I've actually taped it to the ceiling, I've taped it to the wall, and I've actually got the uh, green screen coming over the chair right now. And because I have this background, the background replaces what would be on the green screen. The Zoom technology is smart enough to say, oh, he probably wants that picture to be everywhere in the background. And doesn't this look good? like it looks like I am in this office. And realistically, it cost me 12 bucks plus some used duct tape. Okay, here's how you do it. If I look at the next screen, time up. Um, if you go down to video and you click the Chevron beside stop video, and then you click choose virtual background, you will see this screen. One of the buttons that the red arrow points to says, I have a green screen. Now, you can try to do this if you don't have a green screen, but it doesn't always work. Because then you're trusting Zoom to distinguish between you and your background, which is very difficult for Zoom to do, especially if you don't have a, 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 a singly colored background. Like, it will work okay in front of a completely white wall or a completely blue wall. But it's still not great. If you're going to do that, it is going to have a little bit of difficulty. So I recommend that you don't have a picture like I have. Like the picture that I have is a very detailed picture. If you are not going to use a green screen, at least have a background that's sort of blurry and maybe shows outer space or something like that so that, you know, you sort of blend into it and there aren't clear lines in the picture on the background. Now, you can choose any picture if you want. And in the upper right-hand corner, just below my picture there, there's a little plus sign and you can add in whatever pictures you want. And I'll show you some of the backgrounds that I use as I choose different virtual backgrounds. 
First of all, I can go with none. And this shows my green screen. And I'm amazed at how good the technology is because this used to be a cardinal sin with green screens. Notice it's folded. If you, if you look right here, it's folded. It's, uh, it's got shadows. Like this used to not work. And the technology has gotten so good that it is now very forgiving. So I can be in the Oval Room in the White House. I can be outside the White House. If you've seen this picture that was actually an interesting meme, it was above coronavirus and it said, would you go outside if you could see it? In other words, if you could see the germs all over the place, would you go outside? Probably not. Here's another cool room that I could be in, or I could be in a news studio. So you can go and find a bunch of these, okay? One that I sort of go with is this one because it looks like a you know, decent business. If you want other ideas for this, watch the news. You see a whole bunch of anchors either at the studio or at home, and they have a bunch of options. And they'll give you ideas for what you might want to do for your options. Then I see some people are changing their backgrounds. Good idea. Okay. This is what my hotel room looks like, okay? This is actually a picture of it. See all that gray duct tape at the top? That's the green screen being taped on, and you can see it's being taped over some pictures because I couldn't remove the pictures. Those pictures are nailed to the wall on a, um, on a shelf, actually. And I've got duct tape on both sides, and notice, if you take a look at my picture right now, if I slide this a little bit past the green screen, you get to see the wall. If I do it the other way, you get to see that picture. But if I do it just right in the middle there and the green screen is, you know, almost completely behind me, then it looks pretty professional. It looks pretty good. Okay, another joke that I just heard recently and I love this one. Remember Jack Nicholson from A Few Good Men? Okay, why did Colonel Jessup flush the toilet? It was his duty. Oh, that's funny. In a crowd, people would laugh. Okay, let's talk, about, let's talk about hosting a meeting when you decide to host your own meetings. And again, you can do this for free. When you get into Zoom, you click new meeting. All right, when you do that, you will show up as a picture and in the middle at the bottom, it says manage participants. And if you click that, It'll show you a box, and in the lower left of that box, it says invite. But I recommend you go over to the lower right and take a look at the options there, because you have options like keep people quiet on the way in, and then a whole bunch of other things, whether or not you want to chime, which I hate. You know, if you have 25 people showing up at a meeting, and let's say 10 of them show up late, all you hear is ding, ding, like, and it is annoying. So I believe in turning that off. Okay, but when you want to invite people, click on invite, and here's what happens. In the left-hand side, you have two options, copy URL or copy the whole invitation, and most people copy the invitation. If you do that, you do not have to remember the password that's in the right-hand side, because it'll be embedded. Then you can copy, you can click on any of the options above that for Gmail or whatever. You can click on any of those and send an email, and that works. However, one of the advanced tips that I wanted, wanted to teach you was what do you do if you're talking to someone on the phone, for instance, and you say, hey, let's move this to Zoom, or you want to do a quick Zoom meeting with somebody, but you don't want to send them an email, you don't want to set up the email, you don't want to send them the email, et cetera, you just want a faster, easier way of doing that. This helps. And there was an example last week, I was on the phone with Dennis Mahoney, and I said, let's set up Zoom. And he wasn't near his computer and it wasn't going to be easy. And he wanted to do it on his phone. And, you know, it just wasn't going to be easy for him to get the invitation. So here's what I did instead. Note that if you do a copy of the URL, it shows like the, it looks like the piece above in the red box here. If you copy an invitation, you see the thing that you got from me and you probably see from everybody else. But the fact is, if that other person just knew the URL, they could just jump into the meeting. Now, they are not going to be able to remember, and you're never going to get them to get this accurately on the phone, right? You can't tell someone, oh, just type in HTTPS, blah, blah, blah. Like, 
nobody's going to get that right. However, how many people know what um, a URL shortener is? Raise your hand. Okay, URL shortener allows you to take a big URL and shrink it down to just a few characters. And the first one of these was called tiny URL. And with tiny URL, you can make a URL that is either smaller or more memorable. And if you take a look at the one here, I can make that into a small URL called tinyurl.com slash, and then usually it comes out AX1, B2, and a whole bunch of mishmash letters and numbers. What most people don't realize is you can decide what those letters and numbers are. And as long as nobody's used that combination before, then you can use it. So I said to Dennis Mahoney, I tell you what, I'm gonna make a tiny URL for the meeting number that I just created, and it is going to be called tinyurl.com, PO, my initials, DM, his initials, and then the date. And that's probably unique enough that nobody else has used it. Sure enough, I made up that tiny URL, and I could say to him, okay, Go to your computer, use tinyurl.com slash my initials, your initials, and the date. Boom, he gets into the meeting. And we don't have to go through email. We don't have to go through the other steps. And you can tend to use that with people a lot more easily. So it's a little bit of an advanced tip I wanted people to know. How do you do it? Over the next couple of slides, I show you. You go into tinyurl.com. If you've copied the, in, the um, URL for the meeting, you just paste it. And then you put in whatever you want, in our case, PO DM 0414. Then you click make URL and it will tell you that it made the URL and he can go type that into his uh, browser and it will get him into the Zoom meeting. Okay, wanna hear another joke? What was Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. -na. Okay. <laughs> I like it. All right. A few bonus tips. A few bonus tips. Again, I told you about the handout slide number. I put it in the upper right hand corner when I'm speaking in front of crowds. Lower left hand corner, though, on Zoom. And that way people can remember where they saw a slide that was of interest to them if they're looking at the handouts later on. Next, look into the camera when you can. All right, this is a very difficult thing for people to do. And you see, even news anchors haven't gotten this right yet. They tend to look down at their screen, but if people are looking at a picture of you and you look into the camera like I'm doing now, they see you talking to them versus if they're looking down, it tends to look like they're, they're distracted. It's a little bit of a disconnect. Um, here is a favorite, and I put this in my email, but here is a favorite of everybody I've ever known that was on a social Zoom. If you want a picture of the screen so that you can post it on Facebook and show everybody the fun that you're having or post it on Instagram, type on a PC, the Windows key, and then print screen. It takes a picture of the screen, and it puts it in a folder under your pictures called Pictures Screenshots. How many people knew that? Raise your hands. I'm surprised because every time I've been in a party Zoom with a bunch of people and I mention that, people get blown away because in a party Zoom, you see people doing this, they literally take their phone and try to take a picture of their computer screen and then when they find out all you've got to do is say Windows print screen, it's amazing. On a Mac, it's weird. You say shift command three and that sends it to the desktop, kind of bizarre. Another bonus tip, shut off notifications so that you are, if you are sharing your screen especially, you don't see things coming out that you don't want people to see and there have been some nightmares, especially for text messages where someone's doing a business call and they get one of those things on a Mac where it just shows the last text message that you got from somebody, and that can be dangerous. Okay, goals and takeaways from the meeting. Mute yourself, use the space bar to talk like a walkie-talkie. And we saw how you can communicate a little bit with people by reactions and waving your real hand. 
We talked about speaker view versus gallery view. Video, how to do the touch up and how to do different kinds of lighting. We talk about virtual backgrounds. And like I said, I think this, this environment that I show you looks incredibly professional and you can pick any picture that you want and use it as a background. And it probably looks better than, you know, whatever hotel room you're at or whatever setup you have in your house. You could even tape a green screen to your ceiling if you want. But there are also ones you can buy for about 175 bucks where they actually attach to your ceiling and you pull them down like the old screens that or you know, like a, a screen you might even have in a window that you can pull down and then they flick back up again. Okay, we talked about hosting meetings, tiny URL, and then a few bonus tips. And then as a last advertisement for me, all my classes now for salespeople, about social media, all those things I'm starting to do online. I give 20% commissions for anybody here who can find me a gig at their company or elsewhere. I do work mostly for sales groups, but I'm also doing you know, new Zoom classes and actually did something last weekend for the National Speakers Association where they asked me to teach people how to add humor and stories to meetings just to make it a little bit lighter and a little bit better. That took about 35 minutes. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. I appreciate the time. I hope it was worthwhile. Hope you learned a few things. And what we're going to do now is to allow people to come off mute and to ask questions. And what I want to do even before that is to have you give your tips, because I know there are a lot of people here who are hundreds of hours into using Zoom and might have tips of their own. So I am going to stop sharing my screen, get back to gallery view, see what you look like, and um, see who it is that has interesting, helpful, useful tips. So feel free to take yourself off mute or just press the space bar, speak like a walkie talkie, and give us a tip. Anybody have one? Brew, speak up. Hey, everybody. John Brubaker. Uh, Pat, thanks for all the information. It was super helpful. Um, Tell them the, the things you had today, which I thought were awesome. Well, I'm teaching a class that now got moved online, and I'm just trying to create some different engagement strategies. One of the things I did was just uh, encourage everybody to uh, wear a costume to the first meeting. I wore a hazmat suit with like the goggles, the mask, the, you know, the whole deal. And um, it's just, it, you know, a little levity during this time is helpful. Uh, you can also uh, go in, and I'm amazed Pat hasn't done it to me yet, but you can go in and change people's names on the screen, like where my name, it says Coach Brew for my name. He can go in and alter that. So, um you know, that's kind of another way that you can have a little fun with people. You know, um, you could, one, you know, I changed one person's name to Beyonce, another one to, uh, you know, I think Mr. Universe or something like that. And we had some essential employees and some non-essentials. So I changed all the people who were essential. I changed their name to essential. And just anything you can do, and Pat does a great job with humor, and anything you do to bring a little levity, uh, to people's lives and our situation here, uh, I think is helpful. And I learned a ton here tonight. So thank you, Pat. Cool. Other ideas from anybody else? None? Pat, I have a question. Pat? Yep. I have a question. Shoot. Okay. Um, and it might be somewhat technical, but I tried adding a virtual background and by mistake I added, I have a green screen and I can't uncheck it. And I wrote to Zoom and they haven't gotten back to me. It's been about four or five days. Do you have any idea or does anybody else have any idea about how to uncheck I have a green screen? I don't think I've had, as a matter of fact, I'll go in and try it now. Um, but you have oh, a green screen. 
Yeah, yeah for me, it, it actually says that. Here's the thing. Um, one of the bizarre things about Zoom is it will tell you that your computer has to meet certain requirements. Right, and I'm beyond. And yeah. you, uh, here's the thing, though. They are stupid in the way they tell it to you because they start out by saying that you have to be at at least like Windows 7. Right. Like, dude, we were at Windows 7 back in the George Bush administration. Like, nobody's at Windows 7. So you would think that the other requirements are like that, that as long as your computer is less than 15 years old, you'd be fine. Well, I have five computers, but, and they're, like, each of them is two years older than the other. It's like a family of computers. And they're all two years apart. Um, none of my computers will do the most advanced stuff with green screens. Because with advanced green screens, you can actually have video on the back of you. None of them, none of mine will do that. Some of my computers do the green screen better than others. But like, I can't shut off green screen now. So you're right now, what, I, what you can do is to switch to none and, and see, but that doesn't solve your problem. And I got a feeling that if you're at the point where you're actually calling Zoom, Rather than go through that, you're better off just deleting Zoom from your computer and reinstalling it. Uh, you know, I think that's going to be your only other option, unless somebody else has another idea. Yeah. But um, that almost has to fix it. I am totally open to ideas, if anybody has an idea. And by the way, don't do that if you don't have a green screen, because it's a, it's a time suck. I, I will mention that also I have a Logitech uh, cam, webcam at the top of my, that I put on top of my monitor and it has a little um, door on it. And so I can close my video whenever I want to. And so I don't, it, it's like 75 bucks and it's really helpful because sometimes you're not quite ready when you get everything all going with your Zoom and whatever. And then when you're ready, you can just open up the little door and then it shows you just as a, a tip. Exactly. I'll tell you, for the, the poor man's way of doing that, I used to have essentially a little folded piece of paper. Yeah. That, yeah. Right. And, and, you know, it would like it was a business card that would just fit right over the top. And so you couldn't see anything and, you know, it would just block the whole thing. Um, but, yeah, good idea. All right. Other questions? Other ideas? Yeah, I don't got an idea. What's that? Uh, it's, it's dealing with uh, breakout rooms. When I get uh, 20 or 30 people in a class at one time, it's, it becomes unwieldy, and I'm able to break them up into breakout rooms, and that works out really well, and Zoom is really powerful with that. It lets me join each of the breakout rooms whenever I want, each any one of them at any time that I want, and it allows me to either manually or automatically assign X number of students to Y number of breakout rooms and bring them back anytime I want. And they have their own facilities, needs the breakout rooms. It's really powerful. I find it's basically the only way I can can really engage 20, 30 people at one time is by breaking them up. Yeah, I love it. And I'll tell you, I, I was um, very involved in ASTD, the American Society of Training and Development. I was actually president of their Boston chapter for a while. And ASTD is a big believer in the training philosophy that you should teach somebody, teach a group of people something for 15 minutes. This doesn't work as much with technology as it does for things like leadership. But their idea was teach somebody something for 15 minutes and then have them break up into groups in a classroom, break up into groups of two, three, or four and discuss it take their ideas and then bring the ideas back in. So yeah, the breakup room concept has been around for a while and yeah, Zoom is pretty good with it. Okay, cool. Other ideas? Alan. Well, it seems like you have a lot more icons than I do. And I, is it possibly because you pay for those icons and I, I don't? Um, for example, when I hit my um, mute button, I can't hear you on my computer today. What comes up is what I put in in the uh, in the uh, the chat sec section. It says my browser doesn't support the the audio. Um, Whoa! Also, right. What is your browser? 
I have a, a Mac. Um, what's my Safari? browser? I think. Yeah, probably a Safari. Yeah. yeah well, here's the thing. I usually use Google Chrome on the back that I'm on now. I'm using Google Chrome, but Google Chrome brings up the Zoom app. You want to make sure the Zoom app is at its most recent version. You want to make sure you update it. And, you know, the way to do that is you go to the app, you know, like you would to almost any app on a Mac. And in the upper left-hand corner, you know, click down and one of the options is to do an update. And that might make a difference. You also want to make sure, you know, Mac has had a lot of recent updates to the operating system. You want to make sure all that stuff is up to date. Because like I said, Zoom requires that you be pretty cutting edge. My youngest computer is only two years old. And the CPU on it isn't fast enough to do some of the fanciest Zoom features. And now I got to go, you know, buy another computer just so that some of the fancy Zoom stuff works. So uh, at least make sure that everything's upgraded. How old is your Mac? Uh, a year and a half. It's not old. Yeah. It's, uh, but it, but my, the only three icons I have below are participant, chat, and more. And both of them don't really offer a whole lot of stuff underneath that as well. M nowhere near the different icons that you had under, underneath yours. So you're saying it's not really because you purchased it. It's because you have to need to update the, uh, the Google Chrome or Google upgrade to Google well, Chrome, I guess. Well, Google Chrome just kicks off Zoom as a separate app. So I don't know why you aren't saying, because you should definitely see you know, mute, stop video, and the other icons. I get a feeling there's something wrong with your display on the Mac. And that with almost any app, you are not seeing the whole screen. Some of the screen is actually going outside the parameters of your window, but I don't know how to find that out. There's also a setting someplace. If you take a look at your settings, there's something about, the, I, I would look at, oh, you can't see the stop video. Um, if you could get to the video Chevron, it allows you like to do 16 by nine or to do what's called original ratio. And I would think that might make a difference too, but I don't know, it's tough to tell without, you know, actually seeing it. Other questions, other, other tips. I'd be interested in other tips people might have. Tom. Let me get the mic down. Is my audio breaking up? Nope. Well, it was the other day. Um, and I, because of where I am, I may not have the best uh, internet speed. And video wasn't important. Now, obviously, for you as a speaker and when you have the slides up, you need to. But if you find your audio breaking up, it is sometimes helped if you turn off your video. That gives you the more bandwidth. And at least you can get your voice through. Now, obviously, that doesn't work. It wouldn't work for Pat because of the um, presentation he's doing. Good point. Good point. And you have to realize this also. Like Zoom has been pretty popular for, you know, a while now. And a lot of salespeople have been using it for a while. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if you guys heard about the coronavirus. <laughs> this has been in all the news. It's kind of a big deal. And as soon as it happened, and as soon as everybody was at home, and as soon as everybody learned they were going to be at home for a while, everybody started having these as parties, as families, for religious things. And so all of a sudden, Zoom and the internet in general is starting to get more traffic than it was ever used to. So I can understand how your you know, audio and video could break up and it makes a lot of sense. Tom is a heavy tech guy and it makes sense that you know, if you shut off video, which takes up a lot of bandwidth, maybe more of the audio gets through. And frankly, more people care more about the audio than they do about the video. I've also found that the virtual background that you're using there uh, requires a lot of bandwidth through Zoom. So if you find that the video is a problem, then sometimes shutting off the, the virtual background, which I know you don't like to do, but that may be a requirement to do if you find that your video is, is starting to stutter, buffer, or, or whatever. Makes sense. Other ideas. Theo B, did you have a question? Your hand is sort of up and down. I do. Well, not really. A, well, a question and an input as well. Hi, everyone. 
so going live to social media i know that uh, folks are allowed to broadcast uh, their zoom events their zoom parties their zoom get-togethers you know directly onto a social media platform facebook is facebook and the go-to social media platform at this current time for many folks doing those live broadcasts is that uh, something that you can you know kind of run us through real quickly if you, you were breaking you were breaking up in there so i missed it oh i was just saying can you hear me yeah good sorry about it's the bluetooth here earphones but you the, actually froze a couple of times in the middle there so i missed it huh you froze a couple of times while you were oh, talking sorry Oh, right, my so bad, my bad. Again? Yes, the social media platforms, when people are hosting their events on Zoom, you know, their hangouts and their parties and everything like that, they can also, all, they can also do a simultaneous broadcast to a social media platform live. So they can go Facebook live, they can go Instagram live, you know, and have that, you know, have the Zoom conversation going on like we have now, as, you know, and people on Facebook can see, it, even if they don't want to join the Zoom conversation. Quickly. They can see what's going on, what not, you know, be a part of the Zoom environment. Is that something that you can walk us through real quickly? Or? Uh, probably not here because I'm not sure how many people in this audience would use Facebook and Instagram that much. And I haven't done that, so I don't want to be fumbling with it, you know, while I'm with okay. everybody else. Okay. All right, understood. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments, tips? You want to you want to talk about recording of the uh, session? Sure. Um, in the upper left hand corner, usually there's a button that says recording, and Zoom is very good about that. And so, like, I am recording this session. I will make it available to you. I'll put it, you know, on YouTube, probably in a private place that only, you know, this group can see it. But yeah, you can record sessions very easily. As a matter of fact, we did a speaker day, um, a speaker training day Saturday for the National Speakers Association, where seven speakers were chosen to speak about different things. I was speaking about how to add humor and stories to speeches. There were six other speakers that talked about six other things. The whole thing was taped and it was taped not only by the host, but some of the people in the audience taped it too. And it just, Zoom records it on your own screen. Now, one of the options you can buy with Zoom, for some reason you can pay 40 bucks a month to have the, the recordings be put in the cloud. I don't understand why people don't just put it on their own computer. And then if you want to put it in the cloud, you can get a shared cloud option for like a couple bucks a month um so i'm a fan of that however if you are doing just zooms with friends and these things are recorded automatically they take up a lot of space so make sure that you clear them out now it sounds like james you got some experience with this you probably had some other specific issues you wanted to um address with their particular tips that you had the one thing that it has been a good uh, help for me is annotation and using the bar. Maybe you could show the bar when you share a screen and the annotation bar at the top and all the, the things that you can do with that. Okay. Um, at the bottom, one of the options that you have with Zoom is to share your screen. And um, you can, when you click the button share screen, you could share your desktop, which I'm sharing now, or you can share a whiteboard, for instance. And right now, I am sharing a whiteboard, and one of the options that I have is to draw on the whiteboard. And so notice, I'm just drawing some junk now. Sort of meaningless, sort of useless. However, what I can do on this whiteboard is to also allow somebody else to use it. Now, James, I assume you're familiar with how to do this? Yes, I am. Okay, I am going to give you mouse and keyboard control right now. All right, and the way that I do that is, is I I'm can- i right now. All right, I, there you go. 
You would think James, for all of his expertise, could have done something a little bit more clever. All he did was a little more mess than I did in a different color. But here's the thing. I could easily have said something about deep thoughts, all right, in a text message. Okay? James, you could do deep thoughts. Um, I don't see it. I do stand by Jack Candy to your deep thought. Okay. Did you type something in letters, actually, though? I typed something in letters called by Jack Candy next to your deep thoughts. I don't see it. Okay. Not sure why. I'm going to pick the draw, and I'm going to draw oh, around your deep thoughts. There it is. Now, usually, I get one color, and you get a different color. Um... And you did your drawing in orange. Did you choose blue for the text? I did choose. I did not choose blue for the text. I simply chose text, and it came out to be blue. Yes. So I'm sorry. The blue is was chosen, pre-chosen for the text color. Okay. Uh, it's a good idea if you have multiple people doing this to have them do things maybe in different colors so that you can see different things. Now, right here, we just have a whiteboard, and one of the options that you have with Zoom is to save that whiteboard. So this is one of those things that it's almost like a meeting that you might be in where multiple people can put stuff on a board and then you can save it. However, another thing that you could do is to actually change a Word document, for instance, and have two people be actually changing a live Word document. Now, I'm going to stop sharing this whiteboard with James and I am going to go back to share screen, and I don't have a text message, unfortunately, that could be set, I mean, I don't have a text file that could be set up easily, but the bottom line is, we could pass control so that multiple people could type into the exact same document at the exact same time, and it's a pretty cool tool in a case where you wanna have some collaborative collaborative effort either for writing an email that's going out to clients or you know adding numbers into an excel spreadsheet or you know something like that other comments other tips other questions Okay, with your hands, how many people learned at least one new thing? How many things did you learn? One, two, five, how many? Seriously, good, good. Okay, that's helpful to know. All right, I am also gonna send you an email and I'll send you the handouts. I would love to get feedback on anything that I did. Were any of the jokes funny or was that just not a good idea? Was the pace too fast? Was it too slow? Were there too many slides? I'm a believer in showing slides, especially in an environment like this, because even though I believe in some of the face-to-face -face contact, you know, I, I just think if you are trying to learn something that's technical, it's helpful to see the pictures of exactly what it would look like. And you know, this isn't exactly a face-to-face, -face, perfect face-to-face -face environment. So, you know, I think you're better off seeing text than you are seeing me, but I'd be interested in your opinion about any of that. So if you can shoot me something between 20 and 50 words on anything that you think would be constructive, that would be helpful. And I'll send you a pointer to the handouts, you know, before tomorrow morning. By the time you wake up tomorrow, it will be there. Can we do else? this again? <laughs> What's that? Can we do this again? Can yes, we have a, a follow-up? I want to do, do a more advanced one, and it'll probably be a couple of weeks down the road with more of the things that James was talking about, like polling, annotations, more advanced screen sharing, things like that. Um, I don't have it prepared right in front of me right now, and I will tell you this, that when you want to do share screen and have other people see it, there's a set of incantations you have to go through, a set of characters that you have to go through that you have to practice before you do it in front of a crowd. 
because it ought to be simple. There ought to be one button that you should push that gets you from share screen right into the PowerPoint slideshow, but there isn't. So you got to go through a few steps and, um, you know, I haven't done it for the, the other stuff that we're going to talk about. So I'd rather wait until I'm a little bit more, you know, until I've practiced it a few times. Cool. Great. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for coming. I appreciate it. We'll do follow up and we'll see you in the zoom world. <laughs>